This is kvci.blogspot.com, Boston GBR, on YouTube. My fellow Americans, I want to say to you today that is it not strange how the followers of Jesus, Mohammed, Moses, Buddha, and others can sit back and watch what seemed to be the destruction of our nation before our very eyes? Is it not strange that our black doctors, our black lawyers, our black elected officials, our black mothers and fathers and children in particular. Our black engineer and our black college students. Read the statistics that the wealth ratio between blacks and whites are 20 to 1. Let me repeat, 20 to 1. That's a wide, wide margin. And so when we see our children walking around with their pants down, is it because their finances are down as well? When we see those in power construction, constructing more prisons, more jails, more attorneys, more courtrooms and probation officers to deal with the young people in our beloved country. Are we not concerned? Are we not concerned enough to at least speak out about it? I don't know about white America, Asian Americans, Indian Americans, Latinos, the Irish from Ireland, the Germans from Germany, etc., etc., etc. But should not we all be concerned about the disproportionate arrests, incarceration, and apparently indoctrination? are those who are descendants of former slaves. So regardless of what the Honorable Rush Limbaugh says, the Honorable Hannity, the Honorable Black Colonist Star Parker says, regardless of what Savage the Honorable Mr. Savage says, laying all excuses aside, there's something wrong in our society. But few wants to talk about it. But I'm here to say to you, through all of these YouTube cuts and blog spots that right, white right people and black People, even of the lowest level, who don't make $10,000 a year. But they're trying to get their word out. Because few people, few news media outlets, will interview the common man on the street. 60 Minutes don't do it. 2020 don't do it. 48 out, they just don't do it anymore. I contend that they found during the Civil Rights Movement a powerful weapon against the liberation of the weak, the poor, the elderly, the destitute, and the homeless people of America. They discovered the serum of not reporting the issues that are plaguing the least among us. 
But I want to say to you this day, as a retired military veteran, as a family single parent of three, as a person of integrity, a person that is called ignorant, a person that is called last at the meetings when people know the work that I do, but they ignore this servant. They ignore me as if though I'm invisible at local and state meetings. Yeah. As if though I am of zero significance. But you know who I am. You feel it in your spirit. You can tell in my voice tone. You can tell by how the local people here in Valdosta reject me. I was on the radio stations for over 20 years. You know it. Been on TV. National TV. Published in USA Today, the Chicago Sun-Times, locally the Valdosta Daily Times, yet excluded from the Quitman Free Press and never published, and that was the community I was brought up in. But I want to say this to you. As an insignificant person in the eyes of many, that all of us, we may not have subic and verb agreement, we may not be able to make our house payments. We may lose our automobiles. We may not have cable because we can't afford it. Because nobody or very few people will support the truth speakers. We rather support a man or a woman who provide lies in disguise. Rather than support those who give life-given messages, those who take on the challenges of our day. So I want to leave you with this. All of us can't go to sleep at the wheel while all of our black and white right children and Germans and all other children are asleep in the back seat of the earthly automobile seat. I repeat, all of us can't go to sleep in the back seat while all of our children are asleep in the back seat. Going in the jails and prisons while the rich and the famous making billions and billions through the prison system. How much money is getting from the toothpaste and the little food that is paid into the jails and prison. People are making billions of dollars. Yet we sit back with an indoctrinated mind and belief system that we are in the land of the free and the home of the brave. The hell you are. You are in the land of the greedy minus the needy. And until there's a revolution in this country. Very little will change. What, Brother Rhymes, are you talking about when you speak of a revolution? I'm talking about the revolution of your mind. For when truth comes into your mind, it brings about a revolution. And you will be changed forever. You will pass the laws and ordinances in the Senate and Congress of your own head, and you will stop the foolishness, even in religion. In the black community in particular, I can speak about that because I am black, and I came from the religious black community, wherein I went to church every Sunday. And during the week, and I talked about the holy name of Jesus, the Messiah, and he's worthy to be talked about and praised for the good that he done. But what was I doing outside the walls of the church 
All I did was study that King James version of the Bible that they told me was the absolute truth from the Creator. So I began to overthrow the government of my mind and I began to pick up the Holy Quran. I began to pick up the Torah. I began to pick up the lost books of the dead. I began to study about Joseph Smith. I began to study about the lady in the Southern Day Adventist Church that saw all these things in her life. I began to study about the Pope of Rome and where the, where the, the Catholic religion came out of Africa and that we've already had black popes but nobody wanted to talk about that truth. They gave me a Bible and told me this is the word of God. Boy, go outside and play. Don't worry about owning your own business. Don't worry about getting some of the $900 billion that is coming in Valdosta through the skyline that is being built. Don't you worry about that. You don't, you, you'll get your pie in the sky after you die somewhere by and by. So bye-bye, George. But I overthrew the government of my own mind. I wasn't born the way that I am today. I wasn't a fearless man as I am today. I used to be scared as hell of everything. But after God called the revolution in my mind and through the, 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 the Senate and Congress of wickedness and incorrect information in my head, I became a new creature like Apostle Paul said, and I was transformed by the renewing of my mind, and I want you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so you wouldn't just be a fool all the time by those who throw you crumbs of ignorance, pellets of stupidity, liquids that you drink but can't digest, and so you stand on the side of Satan, whether you know it or not. Yes. I remember as a little bitty, it's a whistle, me teeny weeny child. Coming up through time of Brooks County, and I watched C.C. Ramsey and, and Buck Ramsey and uh, the Blackwater Plantation and all other those plants, the Livingston Plantation had millions or thousands or hundreds of dollars. Men of the peasants on the street they couldn't even get a clean glass of water. And I don't condemn any of those Caucasian people. I commend them. God allowed them to be successful. God allowed us to be alive, to be able to see what they were doing. And we ourselves should have waken up and followed their example. So there is no criticism of them. We must wake up to a new reality and overthrow the government of our mind. And we must realize that if our preachers and our pastors and our imams and our rabbis, etc., 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 if they cannot give us a truth that will resurrect the dead minds in our head, then we don't need them. The average person today can read, write, and do arithmetic. So we don't need them today to interpret the scripture for us when we perhaps got already have a better interpretation than they have. What we need to do is to, 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 to capture our children. Yes, we got our first black president of the United States of America and look how he's being criticized on every level. Are the preachers saying anything in his defense? Are the politicians saying anything in his defense? What about the common folks, the father, the mothers, and got little children in school? What about when our superintendent, Bill Casey, denied our little black children, our little white right children, from listening to the president speak on national, on local, state, national, and international television? He denied our inner city school children to listen to a live speech by the president of the